This tutorial video will discuss the proper procedures for performing field testing of direct tension indicators or DTIs on North Carolina DOT structures. Before proceeding, it is critical to understand the difference between tension and torque. Torque is loosely defined as the turning force on an object. Tension, on the other hand, is the pulling or stretching force on a member or bolt. Most connections on bridges are friction connections. It is bolt tension, not torque, that determines the clamping force in a joint. The standard specifications require that for each bolt diameter, a minimum tension value is attained. As you can see in the chart, for the most common size bolt, 7 8 inch, the minimum tension is 39,250 pounds. As a safety factor, the specifications require a value 5% higher than the minimum, or in our case, 41,212 pounds, which can be rounded down to 41 kips. DTIs are a simple and acceptable way to ensure that the minimum bolt tension is achieved. A DTI is a washer with raised protrusions. As a bolt is tensioned, an axial tensile force is generated in the bolt as the DTI protrusions are compressed. The size and the type of bolt determines the number of protrusions. Prior to any bolting installation, a tension indicating device or skid more shall be provided to confirm the acceptability of the DTIs. The purpose of this device is to confirm that the protrusions on the DTI do not compress prematurely prior to achieving the required bolt tension. It is not being used to correlate a torque reading for testing. Three DTIs for each lock for each size bolt shall be field checked in the device. Bolts for this test should be sufficient length so that the three to five threads are located behind the bearing face of the nut. Additional washers may be required. Spacers may also be used in lieu of the hardened washers. Remember, as the nut turns, you're going to need threads. The bolt also should be of sufficient length to fully engage all of the threads in the nut. The DTI should always be placed under the bolt head or unturned element as shown in this detail. Here you can see the DTI placed in the proper orientation with the protrusions against the bottom of the bolt head. Many skid more devices are set up with an insert so that the bolt head can fit inside and not spin, eliminating the need for someone to hold the bolt while tightening. This method does not allow the DTI to be tested under the bolt head and should not be allowed. Tensioning of the bolt should be performed slowly. Tensioning should be performed with a manual wrench. A second wrench is required to keep the bolt from rotating. A handle extension is acceptable. Use of an impact wrench for this test is not allowed as it could damage the skid more. Slowly increase the tension to the minimum required tension for the bolt diameter plus 5% as discussed previously. Do not exceed this tension. Here we have stopped at 41,000 pounds. Determine and record the dial reading and the number of refusals using the 5,000 inch feeler gauge. A refusal is when the feeler gauge cannot touch the bolt shaft because the protrusions have compressed. The number of refusals must be less than the number specified in this chart. If the number of refusals is equal to or greater than the number specified, the DTI fails the verification test. This essentially puts a minimum tension on the bolt at a level that the DTI should not prematurely compress. For a 7 8 inch bolt, the maximum refusals allowed during the test is 2. In this video, there were no refusals at 41 kips, so the DTI passed. The bolt shall be further tightened to the minimum number of refusals for the bolt size, which for a 7 8 inch bolt is 3. Record the dial reading. Again, the bolt shall be further tightened until the 5,000 inch feeler gauge is refused at all spaces, but with a visible gap in at least one of the spaces. Record the dial reading again. This tension must be less than or equal to the maximum bolt tension given in this table. If the recorded tension is more than the maximum bolt tensile strength, the DTI assembly fails the verification test. Short bolts may not fit in the Skidmore device. In order to check the DTIs on short bolt assemblies, long bolts will be needed as a substitute for the first part of this procedure, where we verify that the DTIs are not compressing prematurely. Follow the procedures already discussed. Then proceed as follows. Using a new assembly with a short bolt and a new DTI from the same lot, install the bolt, nut, and washer on a steel section on the project. Tighten until the DTI has full refusal with a visible gap. 
Remove the nut and turn the nut onto the full length of the threads. If this can be done, the assembly passed. Always be sure to use the 5,000 inch feeler gauge. The 15,000 inch feeler gauge should be thrown away to avoid possible mix up during testing. The specifications require that the contractor provide a skid more that has been calibrated by a certified firm within the last six months.